أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa ramadan mubarak. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadi alawla an hadana Allah. Alhamdulillah that by the grace of God we are uh, entering, we have already entered and experiencing another uh, divine banquet opened for us to benefit from. I'm talking about the holy months of Ramadan. Inshallah tonight with the assistance of Sister Rebecca from Osland Interpretation uh, I'm going to share with you a few words hopefully to boost our spirituality in preparation and practicing by the grace of God the, uh, the obligation of the fasting in this holy month better. Just to quickly recap, remember we've been talking and we'll be exploring the means of nearness to the Almighty God. We spoke about uh, trust in God. We spoke about resorting to God through authentic means provided to us, such as noble family of Ahlul Bayt and noble people. We refer to it as uh, Tawassul. And also looked at the other side of uh, the story that was intercession. Tonight I want to introduce to you another, and in fact this is one of the best chemicals that the Almighty God has introduced to us as a means of nearness to him. In the second chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 45, you can refer to it later on, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 45, the Almighty God states, and I quote, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Seek the help by patience and prayers and surely that is hard to practice that is hard to achieve except for those whose hearts are humbled so in this verse the Almighty God is introducing two essential means of nearness to God one internal means from within us that we need to develop and train and exercise as I will explain Another one is an external tool. The internal tool, God refers to it as patience, sabr. The external tool is God refers to it as salat, means of connection. Inshallah, in due course, we'll also speak about that as well. That salat is a connecting tool between us and eternity. And both of them are necessary for our spiritual growth, for our nearness to the Almighty God. Tonight we speak to, to we start talking about patience and the reason that I have chosen it you will see that because I want to relate it to the fasting months of Ramadan. Uh, the Holy Prophet referred to the months of Ramadan as the months of patience, and I'll tell you why. And fasting in this uh, uh, the patience, in fact, in this ayah is interpreted to also mean fasting. There are numerous narrations from Ahlul Bayt. Salam, that in the interpretation of this ayah seek the help by patience they say patience in this ayah one of the applications of it one of the important applications of patience is fasting as inshallah I will explain it but first let's learn about patience what is patience? patience or sabr in Arabic it means al-imsaq it means to withhold it means to control it means to have the ability not to frustrate when difficulties strike. The life of this world, brothers and sisters, is the life of calamities, the life, life, uh, the, the life of challenges, difficulties. Imam Ali salam says, come into this world and expecting not to face difficulties is just like a step into water, of course, without any tools, and expect not to get wet. So challenges in life are inevitable ingredients of the life of dun dunya all right now to be able to deal with them without frustration is called patience in a simple language 
So patience, it means that your tolerance level is higher than ordinary people. So there are people that in that situation, they give up. You lose when you lose patience. You lose when you give up. Otherwise, you will be definitely a winner. And that's why patience is a virtue. Not only to be a Muslim, you, you acknowledge this. There is no religion involved in it. Believers, disbelievers, everybody with common sense. See what I'm talking about. And I'll come back to this to explain it. Anyone with a little bit of common sense, you don't need to be Einstein to acknowledge this, that yes, patience is a virtue. Whether I'm patient or not, I admit that patience is a virtue. In so much as everybody admits that justice is a virtue, whether believer or not believer, in as much as everybody acknowledges that benevolence is a virtue, okay, why, why is it that everybody acknowledges these believers and disbelievers? I tell you what, if you read between the lines, the reason for that is because the Creator, our Creator has put a chip inside the brain of all of us, irrespectively irrespectively in so far as you are a human being healthy human being that chip is there that through that chip you acknowledge and hence we call that chip common sense it's a sense that is common among all of us irrespectively that that what that benevolence is a virtue you know why because god is benevolent and therefore we are program this way to see benevolence as a virtue because God is a sabur, a sabr, a sabbar for uh, most forbearing as he is introducing himself halim and this, that's why everybody acknowledges yes patience is a virtue because God is ever living everybody loves to live forever now, means of nearness, from here I need to also explain what do I mean when I'm talking about me, nearness to God. What is the meaning of nearness to God? These series is, uh, are about exploring uh, the means of nearness to God. What is mean, uh, nearness to God? Nearness to God, obviously we are not talking about physical distance or physical time that until you get to that certain calendar year, then you are near to God. Or until you get that far to the galaxy, then you become near to God. Obviously, we are not talking about physical. We are not talking about the spiritual either. So what is this nearness to God? Nearness to God, my dear, it means to develop characters so that you act godly. The more godly you and I act, the more the nearer to God we will be by the grace of God. Such as, remember I told you that everybody acknowledges that benevolence is a virtue and God is benevolent. Naturally, because we perceive it as a virtue, we like to be virtuous. Okay? That means everybody likes to be benevolent and everybody admires benevolent people. Because God is good, everybody likes to be good by very healthy nature. So the, the better, the more excellent the, your behavior is, the, the, the more excellent you, you present yourself, the nearer you are to God. The more benevolent you are, the nearer you are to God. Likewise, in the story of tonight, the more patient you are, the more, the nearer you are to the Almighty God. See, Quran says, seek the help of patience. You seek the help of individuals, people, others, when you, 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 you miss something. There, there are something that you, you are unable to do. When I'm unable to do certain things, say, sorry, can I ask you for a favor? And I seek the help of someone, okay? The reality, the truth is that we are all limited beings with limited abilities. The Almighty God says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqarao ilallah wallahu huwal ghaniyul hamid. O humankind, you are all, no matter king or peasant, no matter educated or illiterate, you are all in need of God. So essentially, the helper with capital H is none other than the Almighty God. But God says the good news is that, yes, 
I have given you life when you are born in this world with limitations. Your abilities were so limited. Like when you are in the womb of the mother, you are placed in the womb of the mother for the purpose of growing. For the not staying there to grow. Likewise, God says that this world of dunya is like the womb of the mother. I have placed you with limited abilities, but the good news is that you can expand your abilities. You can strengthen your abilities. And the more you expand and strengthen it, the nearer you are coming to me. How can I do that, God? God says, وَالصَّلَاةِ I have given you tools, internal and external. An internal tool is patience. And hence, patience is a virtue. Take the example. Of, I'll give you an example so that I can uh, uh, explain myself here and we can grasp the, the, the concept, inshallah, easier. Take the example of weightlifting. All right? When you look at the weightlifter, very fit, mashallah, brother, sister, a uh, champion. Think of an Olympic weightlifter. Now, if you recall, for example, two years ago, 2018, Harun Shokat lifted the snatch lift, lifted the barbell from the ground over his head. One motion. How many kilos? Over 150. Hey, I cannot fathom even not even a quarter of it to lift it that. Was he born like this? Is it that from day one he could lift that much? Surely not. How did he manage? How did he achieve to become Olympic uh, champion? My friend, if you ask him, he said, yes, you enjoy looking, but you don't know the hardship I have gone through. You don't know the training I've, I've undertaken. And I resisted. I patiently went through that. I had some friends as well. They, they were coming for training as well, but they gave up. They lost when they lost their patience. So what, for example, Harun Shokat had that others lacked was patience, forbearance. It's not, so the life of this world is like a marathon race. Take another example. You win if you are patient. You lose when you lose your patience. Now you know if you read between the lines, Sheikh, why God puts me through this hardship? God is going to answer, my dear, don't you want to come near to me? Don't you want to live eternally in bliss, in paradise? Huh? Don't you want to have all the virtues? There is only one way to do it. You need to be patient. Unless you are patient in facing challenges without any frustration, patient people, two individuals, face the same issue I have met myself in my counseling sessions. Two families both have lost their dears. One, like a mountain, a strong. Another one, frustrated, upset with God, upset with everybody, complaints, stress, anxiety, sometimes suicidal even. What's the difference? The same situation. The difference is the level of their patience. One, the level of the, their patience was higher, another one lower. So the Almighty God says, you want nearness to me? My dear, you need to develop yourself. You need to train yourself. In as much as that weightlifter was training and accepting the hardship of training, hardship in life is in fact a process of training. Take it as a process of training, nothing less than that. Appreciate that, and then if we know that we are grateful to God that I'm going through this hardship so that I become a stronger and a stronger person. And inshallah, by the grace of God, 10 years down the track, you look back and say, wow, I remember back then how impatient I was. So Quran says definitely one of the means of nearness to God is this gem of patience, this amazing chemical of patience inside you that you need to develop it. And it will be only developed through the hardship. Now, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, patience from a religious perspective now, patience comes in three degrees. The lowest degree of patience and still, you see sometimes the challenge for, is a challenge for us, is uh, sub in calamities, in hardship. 
The easiest hardship, as much as it may sound difficult for some people, is that when is when you are tested with wealth, a loss of a deal in a business, loss of a dollar, whether one dollar or one million dollar. At the end of the day, is the wealth of dunya of this world. It's not much. Money goes and comes. For you and I, that we have such a low level of patience, it seems horrible. And as I told you that some people, they become so frustrated that even uh, they become suicidal. God says, hey, relax, you have a long way to go. So the lowest level of patience is patience against calamities of life. And the easiest example is when you are tested with your wealth. Higher than that, more challenging than that is when you are tested with your health, illness. And you only know that when, God forbid, if you are sick. And God forbid if a, a terminating, a long a kind of illness that the doctor tells you that you have to live with it for the rest of your life. It's a challenge. If you ask them, they are willing to spend as much as health, wealth they have to gain the health. So that's a bigger challenge. Higher than that is that if God is testing you with the loss of dears, parents, for instance, Parents are so dear. Everybody loves their mom by nature. Nobody likes to miss their mom, or dad. But it's again inevitable. Okay? And more challenging than that is that as, as difficult as it is, as uh, you know, uh, to, to experience the loss of parents because I have, I know how it feels. The loss of children is even more difficult because somehow parents are elderly and we have seen this reality of life that elderly will die naturally. Who doesn't die? But to see a young child, a two, three year old boy or girl dying, that is a test. That's a big challenge. And if God puts anyone into that challenge, again, God is training them training those parents to make them stronger, to bring them nearer to himself, as I will tell you. Higher level of this patience, that was patience against calamities of life, is patience when it comes to worshiping God. You need to be patient to be able to stand on your feet. You need to be patient to get up early in the morning at dawn and offer your morning prayers. Salat al-Fajr. You need to be patient to fast for 12 hours. Hey, 12 hours is nothing really for you guys. A friend of mine in Denmark, I was talking to him yesterday. He said we fast over 20 hours a day. And still they do. Of course, you need to be patient to do that. To voluntarily refrain from eating and drinking for that long hours. That's why I told you in the beginning, I'm bringing up these tools of patience to you because the Imams of Ahlul Bayt have said patience, a very vivid, clear example of patience is fasting. And that's why now you know why the Holy Prophet referred to the months of Ramadan as the months of, fa of, the months of patience because this is the month that you and I are expected to train ourselves with patience. Through what? Someone may turn and say, Sheikh, can you give me a practical example? I want to be patient. There you go. You are already in the field of patience in the month of Ramadan. Just practice fasting and then you will feel it. You will see. It, it requires patience. I'm so much used to my morning coffee. No, my friend, not today because it's fasting day. I, I'm so much used to having lunch. No, my friend, not now because it's a fasting month. See? To, to, to control yourself against such things that otherwise would be permissible requires patience. Those who don't have patience, they say, oh, no, I can't, I can't do it. So the months of Ramadan is a golden opportunity for those who truly appreciate and see patience as a virtue. Practice fasting, you will develop your patience naturally during the days, during the nights, and, and so forth. So uh, patience is required if you want to succeed in worshiping God. The highest level of patience is patience against sinning. Patience when it requires to be patient on, uh, and that is also another kind of fasting, but higher level of fasting. 
Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, when you fast and you zip your mouth against drinking and eating, my friend, remember that you're supposed to control your mouth against gossiping as well, lying as well, swearing as well. What kind of a fasting person you are that you are fasting, but you are swearing using vulgar language? This is not fasting. So the most difficult level and the highest and the most rewarding level of patience is patience against temptations. When shaitan is tempting against lustful look, controlling my eyes, I was telling a guy that six packs, guys, you only need to be a man to understand what I'm talking about. You, those who claim that they are very strong, let me see if you are in the office tomorrow at the uni, walking off the street in Oxford Street for, or wherever else, and a semi-naked pretty lady is passing by. Let me see if you can tame your uh, desire. Let me see if you can lower your gaze. Show me how strong the muscles of your eyes are. Not, I'm not talking about medically, huh? I'm talking about the willpower behind it, that you can easily lower your gaze. Show me how strong and how patient you are that you are surfing on the net. And a pop-up comes that you know and your conscious knows that I'm not supposed to look at this. Why should I provoke myself unnecessarily? Plus, God is watching. Lower my gaze. Change the page. Okay? So this is a challenge. This patience when it comes against sinning is a challenge. But that's the only way to develop our patience. So coming back to fasting. Fasting, brothers and sisters, is definitely a very clear example of exercising patience. And that's why so much virtues we have about fasting. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that, do you know we are, you and, and the Almighty, let me start from the Quran and then come to the Hadith. The Almighty God says, fasting is prescribed to you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you may develop self-restraint. Self, what is self-restraint? What is self-control? Again, patience. So that you become more of a patient person. And once you have this gem of patience through fasting, in day-to-day -day aspects of your life, you don't freak soon as you face a difficulty. Let alone in your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as much as God loves those who are patient, and says, Wallahu yuhibbu sabiri, God loves those who are patient. God says, Wallahu sabiri. Didn't we say that we are after nearness to God? God says, I, uh, I am with those who are patient. This ma'iyad being with God, it means nearness to God. And when you are near to God, you can do godly things. The mistakes that Christians have made theologically is that because they saw Jesus performing miracles, they thought that he became God. No, my friend, nobody becomes God. Nearness to God doesn't mean that you become God. But yes, it means you act godly. God is benevolent, you become benevolent also to your level. That means you, you act godly. God is most forbearing, you become forbearing and therefore you act godly. Muslim mystics like Rumi, they, they give an example, a parable. Through a par parable, they explain that to us so that we can grasp it easier. Let me share it with you. Rumi says, imagine of a piece of metal is is dark black color for example and cold huh now you bring it close to fire or bring fire close to it you bring these two close to each other and keep it for a while this is resistance this is patience after a while slowly but surely you see that the piece that that piece of metal is turning warming up and it is becoming hot so hot that you can't touch it anymore it's just like a fire the fire burns, this piece of metal also burns. The fire is reddish, this piece of metal, depending on how much heat you give it, it turns slowly into reddish color as well. So it carries the properties of fire without being a fire. Nearness to God is, as metaphorically, is like this. You and I are impossible to become God. Astaghfirullah. But we can act godly. During the months of Ramadan, we can become godly. How? God is benevolent. 
you and I are expected to skip the lunch so that we can feed a bunch of people. Especially, especially remember Ramadan 2020 is a golden, unique opportunity for us. Your parents, those who passed in the past, they didn't have this opportunity that you and I have. Why? Because this is a unique situation that humanity has, ex has experienced. What? Ask your parents. If your grandparents are alive, you can ask them. They never had this experience that during the months of Ramadan and no Saharat, no invitation, we don't invite people over, we don't make barbecue in the backyard and invite your friends over for iftar, or we don't get invited, not heard of. Okay? But this year, exceptionally, you can even shake hands with them, let alone having, you know, barbecue, let alone uh, arranging uh, banquets and, and family uh, gatherings because of social distancing. But fair enough, we can shake hands but sh that nothing stops us from sharing hands. Is it necessary really that people come over in my house and in my backyard that I say that I'll become hospitable? Surely you and I can become hospitable without even physically having people around. How? Share your wealth, part of your wealth, as Quran says, and care for those disadvantaged people around the world, those who've lost their job, those poor and needy people, those who are ill but they cannot afford paying for their uh, medical expenses, and you have invited them over around your table, okay? This is a unique opportunity of showing the sincerity, whether I, in, I want to invite people to my house to show off that I'm, I'm generous, I'm hospitable, or secretly, nobody knows, but isn't enough that God knows, and you are being benevolent. This is the month of fasting, this is the month of uh, patience, and that's how we can improve and increase our relation, inshallah, uh, to God through the exercise of, of fasting and the benefits of fasting, so that, inshallah, we utilize this means of nearness to God. My time is already over. Thank you very much for your patience. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allow me to conclude with the Al-Faraj, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa al Muhammad. Allahumma kun li waliyyik. Al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salabatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi haadihi al-sa'a. Wa fi kulli sa'a. Waliyan wa hafidan wa gaidan wa nasiran wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu arudaka tawa. وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد وكل عام وأنتم بألف خير